Thanks for staying with us this morning. We're in Manhattan and we're at the Wheat Innovation Center. We're joined by our good friend, Justin Gilpum, who uh, every once in a while gets to uh, spend a little bit of time with us. So we really appreciate that. A um, couple of weeks ago, there was a big, uh, big meeting in Kansas City and we had a lot of people from Cuba coming in to the state of Kansas talking about trade. Trade uh, for Kansas wheat farmers with Cuba potentially is very important, Justin. Oh, that's, that's certainly true. When you talk about trade and the importance of trade to Kansas agriculture, wheat is at the top of the list in needing trade, trading partners. Uh, half of the wheat that we grow in the United States and in Kansas, we depend on trading partners around the world to send that wheat to. And in a year like this where we have produced a lot of wheat and we uh, yeah, have, or have low commodity prices out in the countryside, uh, trying to find those new trading partners and trying to get our wheat exported is extremely important. Now, Cuba. Uh, of course, it's a very intriguing market for Kansas wheat farmers. Uh, we have been able to sell wheat to Cuba in the past, even though there has been embargo in place, but there are certain restrictions in place that make that trade very difficult to have happen. But as we're starting to see the uh, momentum and, uh, and the winds of change in place with uh, potential trade into Cuba and relations with Cuba and the United States, uh, we want to be there uh, so that when they can do agriculture trade and we have those restrictions lifted, that uh, Kansas is going to be the first to be able to benefit from uh, uh, having that as a trading partner. And we want to remind everybody, uh, in the U.S., we are not the only people who grow wheat or soybeans or cattle or pigs or, or anything. Everybody <laughs> around the world does that. We just have to do it better than everybody else. So if they're not buying from the U.S., they have the opportunity to buy somewhere else, but we want to make sure that they have the opportunity to buy from the U.S. Yeah, right now, currently, uh, Cuba buys about 800,000 metric tons of wheat annually. Uh, a lot of those wheat purchases are coming from Canada and uh, uh, out of Europe. So when we think about, and you mentioned it, uh, you know, it's important for us to be competitive in the global marketplace. And everybody grows, grows wheat around the world. And so as that landscape has changed, where we've been able to have the most success over the years past into Africa and North Africa, shipping wheat. Uh, we've become, as the Russian crops become bigger and they've become, their infrastructure's improved and they've been able to deliver into those markets. It's becoming increasingly important for us to be able to find where do we have logistic advantages as well as really good fits for our wheat. So when, when we think about that logistic advantage for Kansas farmers and U.S. farmers, it's going to be that Mexico, Latin America, South America, and that Caribbean market where Cuba is right now, uh, it's going to be extremely important for us. And you think of the Caribbean market that exists right now, uh, U.S. farmers have about 80% of that market share. So if we could sell wheat into Cuba, uh, we think that would be a very large and important market for us. And I think you brought up a good point, which is the infrastructure. We've got the infrastructure in the U.S., rail, waterways, things like that, that we can actually get things to ports and get them shipped Absolutely. cheaper than anybody else. Absolutely right. Perfect. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll finish up with Justin. You're watching Kansas Ag Report. We'll see you in just a minute. This segment brought to you by Farm Bureau, a grassroots ag organization representing the state's farmers and ranchers since 1919. KFB.org. Oldie Seed Farms, carrying soil-specific seed. Find them on the web at oldieseed.com. That's O-H-L-D-E seed.com. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Kansas Wheat Commission, leaders in the adoption of profitable innovations for wheat. Online at kswheat.com. Thanks for staying with us. We're in Manhattan at the Wheat Innovation Center. We're joined by Justin Gilpum. So, Justin, mm -hmm. and, and I, I have to bring this up because we had someone go to our Facebook page and, and bring something up. And the Castro brothers have done horrible things to the people of Cuba. But what we're talking about is allowing people to buy affordable food in Cuba. We're not talking. It's not a political move. Is that right? Well, I think for uh, that's a, it's a good question, and certainly one that gets brought up anytime you're talking about relations between U.S. and Cuba. When you think about Cuba, uh, embargo has been in place, and and we don't recognize them as a as a you know their federal government in place, uh, and and that's been our stance from the U.S. for a long time in trying to affect change there. Uh, now, recently there has been some winds of change where uh, when you think about uh, you know, U.S. opening an embassy and and things are happening there, 
And what do you what are they really tried to accomplish through through the embargo? And um, and has that happened over the last 50 or 60 years? And what we're talking about is trying to stay away uh, from those issues, let those issues sort themselves out. But we're trying to we're trying to identify what are, don't don't hurt U.S. farmers, Kansas farmers, with U.S. policy on on who our trading partners are and aren't. Um, and so what, when we can engage Cuba on these issues, we think that it's a the people of Cuba, when you tr when people are traveling down there and they see the see Cuba firsthand uh, and how it's kind of going back in time almost, um, and, and knowing that they are buying wheat and and uh, have have been uh, purchasing from our competitors, why aren't we able to participate in that? We're not talking about uh, uh, two governments. We're talking about two people trying to trade. And if you really think about how do you want to affect trade or try to have influence on. On, uh, on, a, on a people or on a country or even a culture and a, and a civilization, trade can be one of the best ways to do that. Best ways in trying to incorporate uh, from our standpoint what we're trying to do and trying to develop relationships. And so that's what made this, this, this trip so unique and the fact that we actually were able to bring Cuban buyers from Havana to Kansas. We spent time, we were able to get out on a farm, we spent time at the Kansas State University, uh, we went and uh, visited our uh, uh, terminal facility and where we can load out um, uh, load out wheat that gets right on a tra uh, train that goes down to the Gulf and then would be loaded onto a vessel and being able to have an information exchange about how what we have for our capacity and how we're able to deliver on quality needs that they would have. And to me, that's the beginning of a long-standing relationship. It's not about us just trying to identify somebody we can sell wheat to, but trying to identify a relationship between two, two peoples, two so that we can be able to uh, foster that relationship. Perfect. Well, there's nothing that Kansas farmers can't do, and there's nothing that we can't provide the world in some form or fashion. And uh, Kansas Sweet Farmers, year in and year out, deliver a great product, not only for the consumer in the U.S., but worldwide. That's correct. Perfect. Justin, thank you for your time. Great having you here, Brian. Thank you. If you would like to advertise your business on Kansas Ag Report, give us a call, 785-580-3287.